welcome to Aussie Tech. It's episode 624, 14th of March, 2019. How are you doing it's uh i'm doing well and uh, thanks for asking uh yes we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au and startnewcompany.com.au so what's that all about you say i hear you say start new company if you want to register your company with asic so you want to get a proprietary limited company uh you can do it easy and fast with startnewcompany.com.au uh, all you do is jump on there fill in the details in the form and before you know it you've got your uh, asic certificate company registration certificate and all the documentation that you sign and uh, Put in a binder and put it on the shelf. And that's your company documents. Way to go. It's all that easy. And if you want an ABN, they tell me you can ask them for an ABN and they will give you one of those as well. I think it's for an extra forty nine ninety five, but it saves you doing it yourself. All right. So that's startnewcompany.com.au and athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, we are waiting for Jordan to come on to the show this week. So if he does, we can try our little live call in. But I'll give you those phone numbers if he, if and when he does turn up. Uh, Aussie Tech Radio. That's right. You know, you know all about it. It's the Aussie Tech Radio. It's a wall to wall, twenty four seven, back to back tech podcast, right here from Australia. So it's Australian grown, homegrown tech podcast, played back to back for a week. New shows go up every Friday. Shows like ours, the Aussie Tech Eds, the Aussie Mac Zone, the uh, there's uh, Tech Webcast. And I hear those boys over there at Tech Webcast, they're coming up to their milestone 500th episode pretty soon, so well done to them. And you can catch us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. Uh, if there's anything you want us to talk about, pop it in the Facebook uh, post early in the week if you can, so it gives us time to see it. And uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Not that we tweet too much about anything, but... Um, you know, every now and then, might do something. Uh, yeah, so all we've got it at the moment, we've got Joe here this week, uh, and we're expecting Jordan in a minute, but let's say hello to Jojo. How are you going, Joe? Hi, Glenn. How are you going? Yeah, good, thank you. And now you look pretty sharp there tonight. Yeah, mate, I've got my fancy new lights on tonight. Nice. I was just saying to Joe before the show, uh, just what a difference the when you light yourself properly, How what a difference it makes. The camera just loves it, and it mustn't have to strain as much or something, but it does really improve the, the photo. But look at you there, Joe. Blue shirt, I can see everything. You're clear as. Good work. Uh, what's been going on anyway, Joe? Had a good week? You've been setting up uh, lights. I have had a good week. I've been setting up my little uh, studio in, in the garage. Yep. I'm um, going to be doing some YouTube videos. Um, I've been a bit slack in the past. It's but, all, um, all coming sort of together. I've motivated and ready to rock and roll and started setting up some lights and some cams. And I got all these fancy, you know, hardware that, you know, holds things, brackets, you know, stands and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, right. um, yeah, if you might remember, I might have that old, um, that other group I have, Joe, the Gadgets Man group, where yep. I got all that old tech. I'll be going through those one at a time. Yeah, nice. And oh. some sort of, um, uh, you know, talk about and topics and on that. So yeah, so I thought I'd better set up a studio and get a, get on with it. I was talking to a, someone the other day, and uh, I was yesterday, I think it was only yesterday, and they said they were talking to a girl in the JB Hi-Fi or um, what's the other place, J Car, and this is a little bit off track, but but anyway, and uh, and he was looking for something or other, and he says. Uh, Oh, what about LPs? Do you sell LPs? Uh, the records, the vinyl, and the girl goes, "Yes, we do." And he and uh, the guy goes, "You know, these were around before CDs." And she goes, "Really? I thought they were only new." Oh wow! So, How funny is that? Yeah, I know. So there you go, eh? The the millennials of today. But I, as I said to him, I said, "Well, God, she mustn't bloody get out too much, eh? Like, surely you'd know what a vinyl was that existed before CDs and cassettes. Like, surely you'd be watching TV, surely." But, yeah, um, look, yeah. What what I'm going to try and do when I get time and if, and if I have time to get round to it is is I'm going to get some of this old technology and I'm going to give it to some of these little kids, you know, eight, nine, ten years old. Yep. And just get them to play with it and get them to try and get it to work. Mm. So I'm going to have some fun and games with that. See if they can work some old tech. Yes. Don't electrocute them, though, while you're doing it. <laughs> no, no I'll, I'll get things like an old radio or yes. an old amp, um, an old video camera, an old mobile phone even, and mm. ask them to do things like get an old you know, mobile phone and say, okay, can you, you know, do something with it you know, and see how they go. You say, how can you put this tape into that? machine that square box over there how does that yeah, work basically basically stuff like that grab a turntable give them a record okay 
play this play this for me. Mm. Now, look, Joe, I'm glad you're with us this week because uh, you, you know that there's uh, there's been no incidents with all this Facebook and Instagram going offline. It's uh, it, it seems like the global warming won't kill off the human population, but the the down outages of Facebook and uh, Instagram just might have, might see all the millennials at least heading for razor blades. But you you picked up on the Facebook outage as well, didn't you? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, look, I had um, a bit of an outage as well. I wouldn't say an outage, but it's sort of been a disruption. You know, I, I tried to upload some uh, photos and uh, a post in my Joe the Gadget Man's page, uh, Facebook page, and it took me hours to get that up. So, um, and, and I just looked it up, and eventually, apparently the Facebook and Instagram appear to be partially down for some users around the world today. Um, while you can open both platforms, and some services appear to have been restored, users are reporting issues with sending messages on Messenger and postings to the feed on all Facebook products. Um, and accessing other features on Facebook.com, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Mm. Even Facebook-owned Oculus uh, VR is experiencing issues related to this particular outage. Well, I've just popped up here on the screen for those that can see the video. Uh, it's the outage, the Facebook outage map as uh, shown by downdetector.com. And there's also a downdetector.com.au if you're interested. Uh, it's like a heat map and it shows you where the, there could be potential issues. Uh, it looks like, look, it must be a pretty live map because it's changing all the time. I'm not sure if I have to refresh it for it to change. I might have to, yeah. But look, there's a few little outages in Australia still, mainly in the capital cities. By the look, Perth, uh, Victoria, Melbourne, Sydney, and a little light little shade there in Brizzy. But where, where's the rest of it out? Like, looks like what's that? Japan? They got a bit of an outage. And uh, what's over there? Is that like England over there? UK? Oh, yeah, so it's uh, out all over the show. Yeah, that's right. And and it's also um, interesting that uh, they say that any any people who are attempting to log into other apps for like uh, Tinder or Spotify uh, or things that oh, you sort of, yeah. you know, log in via Facebook or log in via uh, Instagram or whatever it is that you have, they also are experiencing problems as well, saying that this feature is not available right now. Right. Well, that is stuff a lot of people because how many sites do you just go, yeah, log in with Facebook? I, yeah, I, do, so, I do that. Yeah. So any, in, if you're having problems logging into some sites, you'll probably find that that's the reason why, especially if you've gone through and, and uh, you know, signed up and log in via Facebook. Mm. So this was happening to Instagram as well? Oh, Instagram, you... Messenger, the um, show. and the Oculus, the Oculus platform. Yeah, right. Well, there you go. Because it made... So on the, over the weekend, I uh, upgraded the server for the ATH web hosting, and uh, we had to rebuild. It didn't... There were a couple of anomalies as I posted up on Facebook, so if you had a little outage, that was okay. But but only went to... I don't know if I came up on the downdetector.com, <laughs> but uh, look, the sites were pretty much maintained their visibility throughout the, the upgrade, and we just had to tweak. Some people couldn't log into back ends, and uh, some people got white white uh, screens but that was only because the just the way they set up their wordpress wasn't as secure as normal and then the new operating system decided to have a bit of a fit about a couple of settings but uh but yeah but anyway like you know i was uh stressing out over the weekend with all these with the upgrade but geez imagine how much people be stressing out over their facebook land well that's oh. right i mean exactly right i mean it, it, it gmail and google drive also had similar experiences around the world mm. um over the last few days, I think they got it all sorted now, but something must be going on. So if any of the listeners know exactly what's going on, if oh. they've heard why this is happening, maybe you'd like to post on our uh, Facebook page um, a link or something because we haven't been able to work out what it is. There you go. There's a thumbs down. <laughs> well, uh, I like that. <laughs> thumbs down to Facebook. Now, yeah, so if you, if you know of any reason why that's happening um yeah do let us know in our facebook feed page and um we can follow up on that now i was talking to a customer yesterday and you know because uh with the hosting going through the uh, server upgrade and everything and now the facebook and everything and uh he, he told me and we and he told me exactly what was the problem he said i know exactly why these things are happening to the world and it's because and i went and investigated this it's because mercury is in retrograde now, what that means what is... What does that mean? Well, that's right. 
<laughs> That's what I said. I go, what? What are you on? And so anyway, crash computers, missed flights, tension in your workplace. A person who subscribes to astrology may tell you to expect all the chaos and more when Mercury started to retrograde. In 2019, that means March 5 to 28, July 7 to August 2nd, and October 31st to November 20. Now, to understand this, this... this this retrograde stuff. Now I had to go and I had to go and look at the dictionary meaning of retrograde because even the Mercury retrograde explanation didn't really explain it. But anyway, what it is is uh, is Mercury retrograde. Uh, it helps to learn the physical process behind this phenomenon, where retrograde means to go backwards. So when the planet nearest to the sun is in retrograde, it appears to move backwards. So east to west rather than west to east across the sky. So this is apparent reversal in mercury's orbit is is actually just an illusion to the people who are viewing it here on earth so mercury uh and earth circling the sun are like cars on a racetrack a year on mercury is shorter than a year on earth so which means mercury experiences four years in the time it takes for us to finish one year so does that make all sense so it means that so if you're driving along a, a racetrack and you know you're faster than the car beside you. You could say that the other car beside you appears to be going backwards, but he's not. You're just going faster. So other other people back in the olden days they were going well uh, because the the gravita- because Mercury's going backwards, as the gravitational pull is pulling the the water in certain directions from our own bodies, you know, and that's what's causing that's what causes this angst. <laughs> This sort of it's a, stuff. It's a, it sounds like it's a bit like when you look at a car wheel turning via, um, a, a, like by, when you're filming it, it sort of looks like it's spinning backwards, that sort of thing? Well, I guess so. I guess so. Yes. Yes. You, you could say that. So that's what uh, the Mercury is in retrograde means. And apparently that's all the it's all the rage. And that's what's happening. Facebook's affected. Instagram's affected. Google's affected. I was affected. Everyone's affected. <laughs> Oh, well, Corey, he reckons uh, on the Facebook feed. Corey reckons that Skynet is tra- is taking over. Oh well, there you go. It could be it could be more sinister explanations than uh, Mercury, and uh, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Did we explain that all right, Joe? That was good. <laughs> it's good. Hmm. Now moving on. Now a Sydney man down down near you, Joe. Sydney man charged for selling stolen Netflix Netflix and Spotify credentials. So you've got to be pretty game, haven't you? So he must have, like, you know, scoured the, the dark web and found some dumps of passwords and emails and blah, 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 and decided to just set up a, um, a website in the real world outside of the dark web and started selling them, like, moronic. A Sydney man has been charged by the Australian Federal Police for allegedly selling stolen subscription credentials for online things called uh, Netflix and Spotify. 21-year-old was arrested during a raid of a DY property in Sydney's northern beaches. Uh, where police seize cryptocurrencies and electronic materials. Uh, so this arrest follows a joint investigation uh, with the FBI. So it's uh, big news there. The website had stolen accounts, uh, details for online services, uh, uh, including Hulu, for around two years before being shut. So prior, so this site was called Wicked Gens. I wonder if that's still going. Wicked Gen. Let's have a look. Wicked. You've got to be a bit silly, really, to try and create a website and then sell stolen or unauthorized logins to people i mean how long do you think that's going to take before they get caught yeah i know that's, that's what i mean like I'd, i wonder if it'd be a wicked it wouldn't be a wicked gens.com he's obviously not going to come up in a google search yeah then mm-hmm. yeah a, the only other way i can think of the other way mm-hmm. i can think is that sometimes you can loan um somebody your login and this guy may have you know created maybe a few accounts and then um, that might have been him there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bit, a bit, a bit crazy. But uh, yeah. So police will allege that the administrator of Wicked Gen made an estimated th- only three hundred thousand dollars selling the stolen cre- uh, subscriptions through his website and other similar sites identified through the course of the investigation. But I mean, he's gonna he's gonna go down for a little while. That's a that's gonna be a big fine and a big punishment. But is it worth it for three hundred thousand? I don't think so. Oh, it'd be interesting to see. We'll follow that up and see how how he goes. But yeah, if you're talking a couple of million, you'd be happy, but not three hundred thousand. So, uh, like, how long can these things go anyway? Like, if you, if I, if I stole your Netflix credentials, Joe, like, how long before you're going to ring up and go, "Hey, someone's using my account"? 
Because well, it, it won't ha- I think the way it would work is that it's a bit like if you have uh, an Optus Sport account, um, you can have four logins on that account. Mm. Now, um, logins being you can have a an iPad, you can have a, an Apple TV, you can log in via a browser, and you can log in via your phone. Yeah. Now, sure, you might give that to somebody else, right? And what that normally does is if you give it to another person, it'll knock one, one of the others out. Yes, yeah. So you eventually would find out that there's more than four people that have the login to your account. That's right. Yeah. It wouldn't take you long, and you'd be ringing up saying, what's going on? Yeah, so I don't know. Is it, is it all worth it? What's Netflix, 10 bucks a month? Well, that's right. Is it's it worth 10 it? 10 bucks a month. Why would you bother? Exactly. And I think that's where it's all, it's, they've hit the sweet spot, you know, like they they tried to talk about years ago, how to uh, circumvent piracy, how to stop it all. Well, I think Netflix and, and Spotify and the like, they've probably done it. They've probably, Spotify certainly, I can't see or haven't heard of anyone pirating music. Have you, I haven't heard of that for ages because it's like Spotify, what, 12 bucks a month, play whatever you like. So that's finished piracy off for of music. I can't, I can't think any of anything that I can't find on Spotify. Can you, Joe? Do you listen to anything that's not on Spotify? I'm not a big user of Spotify. I, I can't. I, I don't know. Do you still buy music, like physical? No, I don't buy any CDs. No. Right, just not in the music. I, I just listen to mostly to um, YouTube music. Oh yeah, right. I, have you subscribed to that YouTube Premium or whatever it's called? Yes, I am. Yep. How do you like that? Oh, it's great. I love it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know someone else that subscribes to it. They reckon it's great too. Uh, why would you say it's better than Spotify? I wouldn't say it's better. I would just say it's different. Um, um, it's just a different account, just a different sort of uh, way of listening to music. You know, some people use Spotify. Having said that, I mean, I use mostly mine on my Google uh, um, Mini and I use it on my Google uh, Hub. Right. Oh, that's right. Because yeah, you're right into the the assistance and stuff. Yeah. Yes. So therefore, yeah. I use the premium, which also um, allows me to to use um, whatever music I want to listen to. For example, if I want to name an artist and a band, um, the premium account lets you listen to that. Mm. If you just have a basic account, it only lets you listen to the 100 hits or the best of the 80s or, oh, or something like that. Right, right. But it won't give you specifics. It might let you listen to specific songs. Right. Uh, the other thing that I tested out when I had a when I got me grubby little mitts onto it to, of me mates is that I liked that you could listen to, uh, say, the music with the phone with the screen off on the on just normal YouTube. As soon as you turn the screen off, then the mu- the sound stops as well. And the other one was that I could watch the the video on my phone and send the sound to the Sonos or to somewhere else, to the Google Chrome. So that was good. Yeah, well, that's right. That's what the premium account gives you. A premium account gives you access to be able to have your screen turned off and keep continuing to play the music in the background. Mm. Um, it also gives you access to ad freeze. So when you're you know, watching something on YouTube on your computer, you don't get those pop-up ads, and you don't get the uh, the ones that stop halfway through your through your, your your show that you're watching or whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah, um, you don't get any of that pop up every 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 you know fifteen minutes or every you know so minutes. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not sure. Like I'm I haven't gone. I'm not paying for the YouTube yet, but I'm not sure how much how many ads do they have to insert before people just go. You know what? This is rubbish. Um, I don't know what. what well, the- I mean, if if you use YouTube um, on your computer on your PC, and you see the amount of ads that pop up, mm. um, using YouTube Premium, you won't see any ads pop up at all. You won't see any um, anything anything stop start slowing you down. Just just keeps going. So YouTube must then pay the creators out of that ten dollars. Look, I don't know how that works. I have to look into it. Um, but it's interesting because if everyone goes premium, then how do these artists um, and YouTube creators get, or well, even the music you know, industry, how do they get paid? Mm. Yeah, well, that's right. So they must have to do something like that. Um, now, what's this about a Chinese subway? What are they up to? Yeah, look, I mean, in China, um, in Shenzhen, um, they've got this subway um recognition uh, facial recognition um 
thing going on where they're experimenting with um, paying your fare by using facial recognition. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, apparently they're scanning your face on a screen to get into the subway. It might be not that far away in the future. In China, uh, tech, the tech capital, uh, Shazin, um, a local subway operator is testing facial recognition, uh, ab- uh, subway access powered by a 5G network. Mm. That'd be hard in China. They all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently, listen to this. The trial is limited to a, a single station at the moment. And it's not immediately clear how it'll work for, for twins or the lookalikes. Yeah. But people entering the station can scan their face on a screen where they will normally have uh, their, where they normally tap their phones uh, as they go through mm. um, or, or their cards. Uh, then their fares get automatically ducted from their linked accounts. Um, uh, Is- they would need to have registered for their facial data beforehand and linked it to a payment system. Uh, before they can use this uh, particular subway um, recognition software, why don't we just get a chip put in our finger that would save every save all well, the problems? That, that's coming. That's coming. But at yeah. the moment, there there um, uh, there's some something about that. I can't remember now what it was. Something something about that that I don't like using that sort of system. Mm. Well, I guess you know uh, if it's got everything on it, like your bank account, and everything. People just go you get chop, fingers chopped off everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, apparently this this, um, this um, algorithms for the facial recognition uh, technology was designed by a lab in uh, Shays in Metro, um, and also by the phone maker Huawei. Right. Yeah. So Huawei's into this. Uh, Huawei said that of they're course. using facial recognition for payments is not something new. Um, although they're using it on the subway, it is something new. Uh, but at KFC stores or some or fried chicken stores across Australia, across China, they're actually God. using it. Yeah, right. I reckon. Oh, I don't know. Political statement ahead. I reckon like Huawei's involved in it because you know they they're sort of owned by the Chinese state, and uh, I reckon they're only really involved because they just want to track everyone. You know? Well, the thing is, they're. I don't know if you've been looking at the news. Apparently, they're pretty pissed. You know, that they they're fighting back now. They're saying, how can you know? They're they're taking uh, all this uh, bad uh, bad publicity and, and mm. they're taking it to heart. So they're fighting back now. Well, they, so they're interested in what happens there. Well, they they might be fighting back, but I don't think well, if you can believe what you're told, you know what you can what you're told on the news and stuff like that. The, the Chinese government is majority or part owner of Huawei. So America, Australia, and the Allies they don't want the government. A foreign government to be having uh, all this control over, you know, our communications. So I don't think it really matters. You know, you know, I don't think it matter who owns it if it's Chinese or whoever. If they reckon that there's a, there's a security issue, well, bad luck. See you later, Huawei. Yeah, but I don't. I've got no problem with it. You know, obviously there's problems with you know with America and Australia thinking that there's problems with Huawei. So I don't have a problem. Okay. Oh um, yeah. Look, look. I don't know. I, I'm in two minds. Uh, I would think that uh, you know, all these companies around the world, there must be something in it. I mean, or there was something in it. I mean, I, I remember uh, speaking uh, a few shows back about some particular people that were caught um, who worked for Huawei. Mm. Um, uh, so, well, didn't the, they uh, that uh, Alexander Downer, who used to be our foreign minister, foreign also, minister, yes, yeah, didn't he? He went over, or he went for the and worked pretty high up, or the managed the Australian arm of the Huawei for some period of time. But then yeah, again, he was uh, embroiled in all that other Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton stuff as well. So who knows yeah. what's going on with him? But anyway, yeah. Um, um, yeah so that's... what else? I'll tell you something else that's interesting all about about all this this um, facial recognition in a subway is that China is way ahead of the U S when it comes to mobile payment systems um, as nearly as half of the country has used their phones to make payments in 2018. Right. Nearly half the country wow. used their phones to make payments in 2018. Yeah. So that's... payments were made through the WeChat pay mm. app that they have or the Alipay and was so popular that China's central bank had to warn stores last year not to reject cash. 
Wow. <laughs> or face unspecified penalties if they did. Yeah, right, right. So um, well, remember there that, was a... that, that sounds pretty, you know, like we're going to get pretty close to cashless society, isn't it? Well, remember there was a story hit not long ago over here at 7-Eleven where some lady tried to pay for, I don't know, something. It was like $13 of milk or whatever it was at 7-Eleven and the cashier in, and she tried to pay for it in 50 cent pieces and the cashier said no I'm not taking it because I thought I thought that you yeah, had to accept it it was legal tender I thought well okay that's legal tender you, you know you have to accept it but uh, apparently the, the article I read cited some rule and I went and looked at it up and it was actually on the legislation or in the rules or whatever it was must be yeah, it'd have to be legislation if it's a rule, isn't it? So it's in the legislation that she's right. If it's there, there was a there's a whole paragraph of if it's over a certain amount, you don't have to accept denominations of small amounts. And it's well, actually it's actually there. No, I know. Neither did I. And you know, you get these people that you know they go in and pay their parking fines with five cent pieces and all that sort of stuff. Well, it's law. People don't the council or whatever doesn't have to accept you know six million five cent pieces. And I never knew that. And, but now well, I do. There you go. I, I'd like to know what the threshold is. If, if anyone that's listening does know what the threshold is for uh, legal uh, tenancy of, of cash, like um, that you don't have to accept, if someone can just post it up on our group, yeah. uh, I'd love to be able to find out what that is. We might have to um, uh, go looking for that. But yeah, because you'll have to search for it. You have to do a bit of a Google. It's in the, you know, go trawling through government websites and legislation nightmare but i'm pretty sure we might have spoke about it so it might be in the show notes should just do a little google search on our aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast show notes page see what comes up but just while the, while, while you were talking there i just heard uh the doorbell that must be jordan let's let's see if we can handle this technology tonight uh let's see if we can bring jordan in there we go hello jordan can you hear me he hasn't even got his headphones in. Look at him. He hasn't got headphones in. No, oh, we'll keep we'll keep going, Joe, until he gets his headphones in. Um, now, yeah, Microsoft. They now I, I just realised this. I was just reading the story that it's in America. It's Pi Day. Have you ever heard of Pi Day before? No. What's Pi Day? Well, Pi Day is today. It happens once a year. And it's probably more for the U.S. market than anything else because it's uh, the you know how they switch the date, the day, and the month around in their date. So it's uh, everyone's taking three hundred and fourteen dollars off things. So because of the pie three point one four. Yes, we can hear you. Well, that's all right, isn't it? Yes. It's a shame I can't hear you. <laughs> all right. Well, you just keep mucking around until you can. Can you do sign language? Yeah, you just. Keep... Oh, there we go. I got you. No, I got you. There we go. I got you. Did have my headphones turned up? I'm probably too loud, am I? No, you're right. You're good. All right. How are you going? Good. I, I kind of just mosed in and I, I didn't have my normal um, mixer and everything set up because it's out in the car from doing gigs over the weekend. And I just kind of figured, well, since I'm not doing Facebook Live anymore, I, I'll just kind of go with whatever I can slap together. So everything's probably changed. Yeah, no, you're going all right. Um, yeah, so what's been going on, Jordan? You've been busy. Oh, flat out, flat out. I probably just in- interrupted all your stories coming in at the wrong time, did I? That's all right. I was just talking about Pi Day, which is uh, Pi is in 3.14 uh, yep. in, in America, you know, the third month, 14th day as they go. Uh, I'm sure you'll work it out. But yeah, so it's Pi Day in America. So a lot of people, uh, Microsoft, uh, look at all this, Microsoft, HP, they're all taking $314 off things. So if you're looking for a computer and you're in the US, go and get it today. You'll get pie it as day. cheap as a pie. Dell's Inspiron Gaming Desktop, normally normally nine nine nine, but it's uh, now down to six eighty five after the three hundred fourteen pie discount day. Well, how good's that? That's a that's a big difference, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So uh, there you go. But that was just something uh, just to fill in time. <laughs> I just saw it, so I thought I'd start talking about until, it until I arrived, huh? Yeah. Now uh, wait, look, I've, I've probably got a story to go on with. While we're while we're here talking, no, I've been flat out. I'm sorry. The last the last few weeks, it's just been mind bogglingly busy. If you, that's a well, word you'll, you put in there. Uh, mind boggling. I can't even say it again. How's that? Mind boggling. Um, <laughs> yeah, just flat out. I've been doing a, a, a PA a PA install in a pub, um, and um, just just flat out 
and then having to engineer all the bands and everything for their first few nights to get the ball rolling and test the equipment out and all that sort of stuff. And I've been over there again this afternoon, just putting in a couple of the final touches and things. Nice. Like that. So that's Plus all my normal my normal work and my normal gigs that I normally do and my normal job yep. that I normally have. And have you been stressed out? Have you been stressed out? A little bit. Well, me and Joe and I know why that is. And you'll have to listen to the start of the show. I did listen to the start of the show. You said something about Mercury. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> You're on it. <laughs> That's exactly right. You've done your homework, mate. <laughs> now, let's move on to something else. Uh, Windows 7. You know, we're all getting to the end of the Windows 7 life in 2020. Well, just like the old XP, remember when the old XP was becoming to the end of its life? Windows 7 will now start seeing pop-ups advising them to upgrade to Windows 10. Yes, a nag screen from Microsoft is coming. So it's a courteous reminder that uh, you'll, that users will see a handful of times throughout 2019. So what a handful means, and God only knows. Uh, those who click on the notifications will be taken to information on the latest lineup of modern PCs and modern PCs, and information for moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10. So look, I reckon, I think you can still bung in your... You know, if you're going to install Windows 10, I think you can still bung in your 7 key and uh, upgrade. I, pretty, I think you can. There's there's still a way to do it. You know, remember when in Windows 7 you could upgrade for free to Windows 10? I'm pretty sure you can is still it, do is it. Is it still free, though, when you upgrade via that link? I think if you bung your... I'm, I'm not sure if you can put your Windows 7 key into 10 uh, or if you have to go through the accessibility options and do a weasel round sort of a way. But I'm pretty sure there's still a way. Um, if you Googled it, uh, you'd probably be able to find it. But, um, yeah, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's still a way. Uh, but I'm running. I think I've got one Windows 7 machine running at the moment, and that's really, well, that's a virtual machine. So I don't have any. No. Well, My that... virtual machine's Windows XP. <laughs> yeah, right. God, what do you got that for? Because I just can't be bothered upgrading my myob. Well, that's why I've got seven. Because I, I put can... my myob in the <laughs> virtual machine, and it just, it just stays there on um, on yeah. Windows XP. It will install on Windows Seven, but with errors. And I just think, mm. well, it's bookkeeping. I don't want. I well, don't want any errors. And my accountant hasn't complained when I sent him a DAT file for version thirteen yet. So right, he oh. just upgrades it. I think on the fly when he does my books. Yeah, right. Oh, I don't even get in my account to do that. He just, uh, yeah. he, I just send him me profit and loss, and that's that's it. It's big, it's the only reason big I fat use zero it. anyway. So it's <laughs> easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly the same reason I use mine because, like, you spend six hundred bucks to buy my old back in the day when you buy, you know, the physical version, and then uh, what lasts a year? Windows eight comes out. You install it on Windows eight. It doesn't work. You ring my old up and say, I want this to work on Windows eight. You got to buy a new my old. Yeah, it gets yeah, no, it's upgraded. Yeah, it's all, most of it's in the cloud now anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, so, you know, you got a subscription. Yeah, well, I don't subscribe to it because uh, these little things annoy me. You know, I hold a bit of a grudge <laughs> against people. Yeah, well, you pay that good money for the software. Why should you have to, you know? I think they could have given me a bit of a leeway. It's like Apple, you know, they pay yeah. good money, or any anybody, Samsung, pay good money for a phone, and then they slow down your software and make you buy a new one. Yeah, I think like I think I'm not sure how long I had maybe 12 months or so, and then you know the computer's upgraded, that Windows 8 upgraded, and for them to just say you got to go and spend another 600 to get the latest version, it's pretty rude, isn't it? Yeah, they that's even, they won't even they won't even try to help. No, that's right, and that was that just that that just straight down bean counting. You know, so I just um, see it as, well, my little Windows XP virtual machine is never turned on. It's never on the internet. It doesn't even have a virus scan or anything in it. I just turn it on to do my books and right. then close it again. So I don't think it's at any risk in any way of being... Oh, my, mine's mine's out on the internet for all to see. All its glory. Oh, I, yeah. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Who cares? I'll put virus scanner at on least, it. I'd at least try and keep it a little bit secure somehow. Oh, it's got a virus scanner on it and everything. It'd be right. Yeah, but right. the operating system's not patched. You know, there's no Patch Tuesdays going on with Windows. Oh, thing. yeah, I get what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah, you might be right there. Yeah, I'll think about it when Windows 7 end of life comes. I'll, yeah, I might pull Windows the... 7 will be a bit sad to see Windows 7 go, to be honest. I kind yeah. of like Windows 7. But in saying that, I don't have any Windows 7s anywhere. Mm, I'm on Windows 10. Why, why would you have Windows a 7? Now. Why would you have a 7 when there was a free upgrade? 
Like, why would yeah, you? Why have would you? It? Unless and you had not, a all specific people reason. And, and moan about um, Windows 10. I don't reckon it's that bad. I kind of like it. So, mm. all right, uh, Joe, you're going to tell us about crypto jacking. Yeah, crypto jacking. If anyone hasn't heard of it, crypto jacking is a new type of threat which a hacker uses some type of malicious software to um, take advantage of your system resources. So basically, it's it's in the action of secretly using your computer to mine crypto cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency. Right. Yeah. So a crypto, a crypto jacking would involve the victim unknowingly installing software on their computer that would run in the background, um, doing some uh, solving of algorithms to generate units of cryptocurrency mm. that would go back to the wallet of the hacker. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes this could be. Uh, this, sometimes this can be crypto jacked easily and simply by visiting a website from within your browser. Right. So I wonder, is it like, is it that easy? Like just by visiting, or do you have to click on something to install something? Yeah, basically, crypto uh, jacking is similar to any type of uh, malware attack. A user will be tricked into installing some sort of malicious software on their computer, uh, which will then have access to their systems. Um, well, uh, with crypto jacking specifically, the software will quietly take a portion of your computer uh, processing power and use it to solve the comp- complicated algorithms. Right. When these algorithms are completed, uh, the, the cryptocurrencies are deposited into a, a wallet, usually one with associated with the program that's been used. Now, there's a slightly positive side to this if you can call it a positive side, I guess, hmm. uh, that these programs are designed to be discreet and are stealthy to avoid detection, of course. Hmm. But uh, you should also notice, you shouldn't notice any change in your computer, um, if, if at all, uh, if you have one of these particular programs running on, on your computer. So at the very least, the particular brand of malware isn't going to make your computer inoperable as some other type of malware does. So you just might find that your computer is a little bit slow here and there. Well, they were doing that with um, with with servers and stuff as well, weren't they? At one point. That's right. Yeah. yeah. At some point, they were some hacking some sort of servers to do that. Get um, other computers out there mining for them. Yeah. So, the the type of um, most popular one that's around at the moment is the browser one that that we're talking about. Uh, it's it's more alarming um, that it can be done in the browser and doesn't require you to download or install any any sort of software. Um, simply visiting a website will result in the code automatically running and using your computer resources. Mm. Um, the scripts that run allow the crypto jacking to take place uh, uh, buried deep within the JavaScript of the website. Right. As the JavaScript is found on almost every website, it can crop up almost anywhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like, so. yeah, well, hopefully the, you know, all the antiviruses can, I don't know, figure out a way to come in and, and stop all that. But I guess if you notice that your computer's slow, you're going to have to go and investigate. But, geez, that's going to be hard to to uh, detect, isn't it? Uh, you, usually it's hard to detect. Um, what what some people are saying is that um, some sites actually use this, this form of um, crypto jacking, if I can call it that. Um, that what they do is they um, it's a potential uh, ads replacement. So it replaces oh. advertising in, in your website. Yes. So rather than seeing a bunch of uh, mm. advertisements on a website, um, this particular uh, crypto jacking will um, use a small percentage of your of your computer uh, uh, processing power mm. to do what it's got to do. And then this, of course, would have something um, that you need to agree with, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's a few websites that won't, won't ask you. They'll just go ahead and do and it. do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's and always nice to be asked. that's why they call it uh, crypto jacking. It's a bit like if you remember the days when your homepage was hijacked yeah. and you went to websites. Yes. It's a bit like that. Your homepage changed. Well, this one here is... Does this sort it's of bit in the background, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know, if it, is it? I suppose it's still worth it. But I was looking at the prices of the cryptocurrencies the other day, from Bitcoin to Ethereum to 
the good old ripple. And, uh, geez, it's, it hasn't recovered, has it, like from the highs no, it, of it, two years ago? I haven't looked for a few weeks now, and, it, and it's looked like the prices have dropped so much. Mm. And, that, and, and some might say that that's a positive in one way. You go out there and you start buying all these things that are cheap, things that you think that may one day um, you know, re, re, re increase in value. Well, that's um, the go, isn't it? But how how uh, how uh, scared are you to say go and dump two thousand in the Bitcoin when it's five thousand? Well, it's five thousand dollars a coin, or are you going to go and dump two thousand dollars into Ripple when it when it was three dollars and now it's forty four cents? You know, you you. Know, I suppose that's yeah. where people make the big coin. They take the risk, don't they? They put the money where well, their mouth well, is. That's right. And... I mean, I I bought in uh, at Ripple at, at ninety nine cents or in almost a dollar. Mm. Um, so I saw it go up, and I was going to buy a few more, and I bought a few more at a dollar twenty. But oh. now, like you said, it's gone down to forty four cents. So what do I do? Do I keep it? You got to. Do I get rid of it, or do I buy more? I bought some at three dollars something. Oh <laughs> so, wow! So yeah, uh, lost big time. Yeah, so uh, I'm um, keeping, keeping, hoping for the yeah, boom. Look, I, I would, I would keep it as well. I'm mm. actually thinking further down the line. Um, Probably going in and getting a few more hundred uh, ripple coins, yeah, and, and see how they go. I mean, at at, at forty four cents each, you know, what's that? Forty four dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, so yeah. it's worth. It's for me. I reckon it's worth spending an extra fifty bucks hmm. on the ripple coin. Yeah, I, I do believe. Maybe not today or tomorrow or next year. But I do believe that that particular coin will increase in value in the future. Well, remember, I, know, I can remember we did a story on that. Uh, the first. Bitcoin, I think it was, was it the first Bitcoin that ever was traded? I think there was it cost this guy two Bitcoins to buy a large pizza. So that's how much the Bitcoins were worth way, way back. So he had two, bought a large pizza, and now they're worth today they're worth about five grand each. They were they did hit the high of about twenty two grand, didn't they? A little that's bit more. Right. Even. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Um, yeah. So just finishing off on this topic. Yeah. Um, so how do you avoid uh, crypto jacking happening on, to you, right? So what you can do is um, you can get yourself a good antivirus. Mm. I personally use Nod32. If anyone uh, is interested in using an antivirus program, I actually use it. And no, I don't get any royalties from it. I'm just saying because I've been using it for so many years now and it's never let me down. Yeah, that's good. Um, so um, avoid, you know, going into websites and um, changing their codes and their stuff like that would be another thing to stop, mm. you know, trying to get into the websites. If you're sort of like playing around trying to hack into websites, don't do that because that'll be another way that you can get you know, crypto jacked. Does Nod come up and tell you that you're entering a maybe an insecure site or something like that? It does, mm. yes. Yeah, that's pretty good because, you, as you know, I'm a big malware bytes um fan and yeah it does that too it, yeah I'm, probably all this internet security stuff does it these days but yeah if you go to a site and there might be some bad code behind an image or an ad or something uh yeah the thing comes up and says hey hey you sure you want to do it sorry joe keep going yeah, and not mm. that it does do that and uh and the good thing about it is that um it, it it sort of goes back to a general database um it it creates a database from everybody's you know browsing habits uh, only if you allow it to do that, right? Right. You've got to you got to opt in for that, and it, it goes back to their main servers, and in their main servers they keep a um, uh, a list of what's happening, as well as what's happening with Google because Google's also involved in it, and um, they are so then they know that you know maybe you sh- it's a good idea that you don't go into this site. Mm. Yeah, and you can and you can you know you can ignore it and just keep going, or you can just go back and say, "Don't worry about it." Now, here, I've got a site that does it, the, the the owner of this site refuses to do any JavaScripting, uh, and you've all you all know who this is because <laughs> I remember watching him on Leo Twit one day. But it's old Steve Gibson. I don't remember him. Remember he he, he just he's got this old clunky little well, it's not clunky. It's a nice snappy little website. But um, he's little grc.com, but apparently he uses no JavaScript because it uh, uses nothing that's going to give him any dramas. So if you want to have a look at a JavaScript-free site, there you go. Uh, all right, let's see. What else have I got here? Now, look, everyone just wants to belong, and uh, that's you know just what humans do. But Telstra has taken a uh, exception to a electricity provider in Victoria who wanted to 
come into the market called Belong Energy. So Telstra's filed uh, allegations in the federal court uh, of Australia Victoria Registry claiming that the energy company infringed on its low-cost Belong brand. I would, even though they're operating in different markets, I don't know how. How do you reckon that one's going to play out? I think, yeah, well, you think Belong, you do think of Telstra, but but they're in a different market, so I don't know. I don't know. We we need a, a trademark attorney on to tell us what's going on with that. But uh, but yeah, so. Telstra launched Belong in 2013 and expanded the service to low-cost home internet in 2017. It was established to compete with the likes of Amazim, Kogan, Audi and Optus and uh, Virgin, which has gone to us. Uh, Belong Energy was founded this year, claiming its offerings can help households cut their electricity bills through the Victorian Government Solar Victoria Initiative. Oh, actually, I didn't have a look at the... Belong, what's Belong's logo, Telstra's look like? I wonder if it looks anything like that one I just flashed up. Belong logo. Let's have a look. Oh, it is, no. but it's blue. Yeah, well, there's, well, look, there's, 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 oh, the there. Belong logo, as far as I'm aware, is, is blue, isn't it? Yeah, there's a couple there. Yeah, I'll just sort of see oh, if there's, oh. yeah. And then you got this one there. Oh, I don't know. Belong little. Oh no, G's are different. No, it's different text, different. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how that goes. I wonder if Telstra's got a case. You think Telstra, though, being with all their their money, when they trademark something, they just trademark it across the board. They they spend the ninety nine dollars and trademark in the forty seven categories or whatever it was. But yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, and another one I've got here just quickly is about Google. And then G Suite, we mentioned before, or well, a couple of episodes ago, that Google is going to increase the price of G Suite uh, in the US, which has filtered down to increase over here in Australia. And boy, has it increased, apparently. So they're going, so business, the price of the business and basic plans will increase. So basic $5 and business $10 per user. Yeah, that's a, yeah. So okay, so from five dollars, it's going up to eight dollars forty, and from the ten dollar business plan, it's going up to sixteen dollars eighty. So that's a bit of a bit of a hike. And so Google have said that it's because the it covers the increase covers exchange rates. So someone's pointed out that's an increase of of sixty eight percent, which seems quite high. But then you know I was looking at the the prices that that was say so five dollars for the. Uh, the basic plan is going to be eight dollars forty. You think, okay, so in America it's gone up two dollars. So then you think, well, two dollars, push that through an exchange rate. You'd say that's about two dollars sixty. Add that to the five, so you get seven dollars sixty. Yeah. So I think Google's they're still what they're say eighty cents above what you could call a fair exchange rate of an increase. So it's still a bit of a hike. And that's so eight dollars forty. You might have to look at the Office three six five. But then, see, once you're in one system, how hard is it to get out of it? So that, that's a monthly fee, right? Per user. Per user. Yeah. So if you've got a business well, and you've got you want to pay for the G Suite for ten users for ten people, so you want you know the the email professional Gmail for business, whatever, and you've got ten staff, what's well, going to cost you eighty four dollars a month? Well, then you're right. Then you might be better off going to the Microsoft uh, 365 suite. How, um, how many users do you get with Office 365? Yeah, well, the email is is uh, is still. I think the cheapest one, email only, is six dollars seventy or six. Yeah, six dollars seventy per user. So it's a little bit cheaper, but it's pretty. You know, it's pretty much the same. But I guess you can you can. Uh, I don't know. I don't mind that Office three six five. You know, Jordan. I've become I've become to like it, and I and mm. I do I do like it. I like. It. Did, did you know I've been? I don't use it. I only use the free one. Well, I've been using the uh, OneNote quite a lot. I've, yeah, I really I use that all the time on my phone. Flat yeah, out. yeah. I really like that now. I, I love it. Um, I just love. Yeah, yeah can, I love it. You can just untick stuff, but you've got to delete the line. No, oh, I don't do any oh, of that. That was just the last thing I remember you talking about on here. Oh, right. Shows I was on. Hey, you got you were really disappointed that when you unticked the box, it wouldn't delete. Oh, that yes, that's because I was trying to create a checklist or a to do list. Yeah. Yes, that's right. But 
Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, and it was hard to delete. And if you deleted the line, the stuff you couldn't get it to move up and all that. Yeah, so I, I brushed that. I got Trello for that now. We've been talking about Trello, haven't we, Joe? I like just having one app that does everything. That's why I think one note's good. Sometimes yeah. I find myself going back to paper and pen, and then I've got to take a photo of my 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 little paper and pen to do list and put it into one note. So I've got it with me on the go. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or well, I you should try there, Trello. I see. I yeah. see there. Sit there and rewrite it into into one note so i've got it with me but yeah you should try trello trello jordan um it's pretty good it does all those things and more yeah but so does so does one note one note does everything as well it's yeah but just, it's different it's to different me, to me it's just too easy to pick up a pen sitting on your bench and write a note well, yeah. well, I guess it is, but but the Trello is a different beast. It's it's not for taking. Well, it is for taking notes, but it's for reminders, I, I guess. But I suppose you could use the OneNote for the same the same thing. Well, yeah, OneNote. You can pick it up and talk to it and take a voice mm. recording, or you can write something. Or... I like the Web Clipper. I use that every day. You know, you just clip something off the web or whatever and send it In to you. Yeah, mm. yeah, just like Evernote. I love it. Yeah, it just sends it to OneNote. Yeah. Mm. Now that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, listen. Have a go at this story. Very powerful, they reckon. If you really get into every every kind of uh, feature of the application, they reckon it's very powerful. It's a bit like um, Excel. You know, most people don't even use Excel to its full potential. But if oh really, no, that's right. If you really sit down and you get to know the application, it's very powerful. Hmm. Yeah. It's like well, people don't use Word even to its fullest extent. You know, like, it's just so powerful. Like, you know, you've got to go to university to figure out how to use all the table of contents and the indents and margins and, and blah, oh, blah, blah, so blah, 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 blah. And yeah. that is exactly the same theory with OneNote. OneNote, I mean, you can take an Excel document and put it into OneNote. Mm, yes. You, know. you can throw files into OneNote. Yeah, look, yeah. I don't mind it. I, I quite like it. I've been putting just everything in there. Everything I do, yeah. I'll put in there. And so I can refer to it later. Like, if I change something on a website, I'll just screen capture it, chuck it into OneNote, so I know what it looked like before I changed it. If there's a problem later on, mm. yeah, it's good. And there's an app you can get for that too. I think for just taking snaps and sending them straight to OneNote. Yeah, well, I just screen clip it. It's like all different, like OneNote extension apps. Yeah, right, right. And it also integrates into the Outlook and oh, yeah. I love it, Jordan. I love it, Microsoft. You've saved me. Now, <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, hasn't saved this guy. But how's this? Is this where technology goes a bit too far, and where it should be, you know, pulled from the from the day to day, whatever's uh, of it being used? That a man in the U.S. I think he was in the U.S. Yeah, a man in the U.S. has been told uh, by a doctor on video link robot. So you know those little robots that just travel around. It's got the little iPad on the top. Some picture that. I've got an actual picture here somewhere, I think. But picture picture that, okay, if you can't see the video. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I've seen them on, is it The Block, didn't they have them on, or some real estate show? The, the little robot walks, just slides around the place, and it's got a, a iPad on it so you can see the person who's watching the thing slide around, if that makes sense. But anyway, anyway, it's a video link. Anyway, uh, a man has been told he was going to die by a doctor on the video link robot. Now, this guy, 78, was at some Kaiser Permanente Medical Center in Vermont when a doctor appearing on the robot screen informed him he was going to die within a few days. A family friend wrote on social media that it was not the way to show value and compassion to a patient. Well, I'd probably tend to agree. Now, unfortunately, the doctor wasn't lying. This Mr. Quintana or Quintana died the next day. A friend of his daughter posted a photo of the robot on Facebook and said it told Mr. Quintana he has no lungs left. His only option is comfort care, remove the mask, helping him breathe and put him on a morphine drip until he dies. So she later told the BBC News that it was an extremely frustrating situation and an atrocity of how care and technology are colliding. Well, I think I'd have to probably agree with her there. That's shameful. Uh, why, as a doctor, why do you think it's appropriate to do that sort of thing? Uh, the yeah, guy was in a hospital. Know. He was in a hospital. Couldn't they have found another doctor to come in and, sit, you know, hold his hand and tell him or something? Yeah, uh, a bit cold. How, how, is that thing actually programmed to go there and talk to him? How does that thing work? Well, I imagine so. It goes, uh, 
Oh, th- this lady, the daughter, just goes on and says, uh, "I look up." So this, she's in the hospital with the dad. I look up and there's this robot at the door, adding that the doctor on the screen looked like he was in a chair in a room somewhere. The next thing I know, he's telling him, "I got these MRI results back, and there's no lungs left. There's nothing to work with." I'm freaking out inside. I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying not to scream because it's just uh, me and him. She added, "He just got." The worst news of his life, without his wife of 58 years, Mr. Quintana's wife arrived. She complained to hospital staff about how the news was broken to the husband. Yeah, so, yeah, the hospital's come out and since sort of apologised and said we need to do things a bit differently. But, I mean, that's very cold. It is, oh. isn't it? Oh, wouldn't you think, is it... Th- it's like when you're talking to someone on the phone. You know, he just kind of loses. Yeah, but, like, you can't... Wouldn't you think, even as the doctor on the other side of the screen, wouldn't you be thinking, I can't do, I'm not going to do this on robot video. I'm not doing it this way. It needs I, to be done in person. Yeah. Well, I don't think it, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, that's just how it works. But that's when you think, does, you know, there's technology, you can't just infiltrate. Yeah, at least use the emojis, you know? Yeah, hopefully the doctor <laughs> didn't use those. But uh, oh. yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't tell so, someone that they're not very well. At least put a sad face and you know a sick face. And, I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, the poor you bloke. Know, is that what emojis are for when you're texting <laughs> someone or you're doing a video and you just can't get that dry emotion across? So you've got to use your emojis. Mm. Yeah. Well, of people get the wrong idea. Yeah. Well, the doctor probably doesn't look too happy there, but he's he's, a, he's just even dressed no, in a little. Pretty harsh. I wouldn't like to be told told bad news over video. I think you, unless. You know, unless they're on the other side of the world and they've got no way of... Mm. But still... At least have a nurse or some other doctor there when it's happening, you know. I think, of, yeah, I think the, the best... Kind pres- of ease the, ease the communication. Yeah. I, it looks like there's someone standing behind that robot. Is it, like, moved by somebody or is it self-driven? No, there's all, like, remote yeah. control. Yeah, wow. they, they zip around. Yeah, that they're, they're. I've seen them. They're, they're they're out there. They just move around on some sort of tro- pulley trolley thing system, remote controlled or whatever. Uh, and I think sometimes even the person at the other end controls it, don't they? Move it around because he, he that doctor can see what what he's looking at. I would have liked to have seen. Well, I would have liked to have seen that maybe if the doctor's not there. Uh, that maybe they contacted another doctor in the facility and said, "Listen, can you just go tell him he's." You know, he's he's or at least be stuffed. There yeah, we'll say, can you just go and tell him the bad news? And then if he's got any questions, I'll do the video link. You know, if he says, you know, I don't believe you, um, secondhand doctor, well, I'll come on the video link and, and tell him straight. But you just, oh, yeah, anyway, uh, that's how it is. So um, that's no good. No good at all. Yeah, it reminds me of those Robocops. Remember those Robocops that, that patrol the streets? Someone walk up to it and kick it over and get the mm. shits with it. So, well, how dare you talk to me like that? Mm. Yes. But now, uh, look, while you're here, Jordan, let's uh, discuss, if we can, how, how are we going to get people to call into us? Now, I think we did discuss this a few weeks back. So I've got the phone. I, I, I did have something before you move on to that, before we mm. get into a big discussion. I did have a, you know... Here I am running late and, and I had no time to look for stories. And my, my son runs in and says, hey, Dad, I've been getting stories on my phone for you. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> well, this is great. I've been looking for it. Now I can't find it. He goes, there's one on here. He said, there's one on here about Star Trek. Right. And I was, you know, a bit of a Star Trek fan. I've been watching the whole Star Trek series because I've never seen, uh, you know, what do they call it? The original series. Oh, yeah. Know? Yep. And I hadn't seen Teen Jam. Halfway through, I've seen the original series. I've seen a bit of Discovery, well, this first season of Discovery. And then I've seen, and I'm halfway through TNG. I've seen Enterprise, gone through most of it. Well, what are you, how long has this taken you? When did, well, I think I told you when I started, didn't I? When? That was ages ago. Yeah, I told you I was going to start right. watching it from the beginning because <laughs> I'd never seen it. And what do you so think? To, what do you think of the original I'm series? TNG season six and starting to, I'm watching it chronologically. Chronologically, I can't say that word. Chronologically, yes, chronologically, if that's right. So um, not 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 aired not aired order. No, but I've got a list off the internet. Right, I've been watching it chronologically, if that's how you say it. Yes, and I'm up to watching kind of mixed episodes of season six and DS nine currently. It's kind of where I'm at. But did you but, did um, you did you watch the original show chronologically as well? 
Oh, the movies and everything are all on the list. The whole TNG, the original series, the black and white, the, the first few black and white episodes with the different captain that were on before the original series. I watched all those, watched everything right through. So you could watch a, an original series episode yesterday and a next gen today. No, 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 no. So the list I've got, I'd have, I'd have to bring out, I'd have to find the address for you. It was a Star Trek, some guy that's written a whole lot out. Yeah, but what? But when you say chronologically... Which is a feat in itself to know every episode when they kind of, talk, you know... Um, yeah, yeah, well, so I don't I understand. I got confused now. I watched all, like, the, I think there was a movie at the start, possibly. I can't remember. There was like a documentary or something about the, one of the captains that was originally going to be on before the original series started. Right. And then they swapped over to the main original series. Captain, I can't remember. Okay, so, name. sorry, I just want to get this in my mind. I got confused. So, you're not watching it in broadcast order. You're watching it in chronological order. Yeah, so the movie kind of, that's why so, they say, they say that Discovery, for example, the series The Discovery, uh, sits after after teen, after the original series between that and... Oh, so you're not watching episode by episode chronologically. You're watching... Seasons, the whole seasons, and series, everything chronologically. But then, if that was the case, you could watch a, a an original today and a next gen tomorrow, and a something else the day after. As long as they link, as long as they kind of make sense, yeah. So some, that's what I was saying. Right. This website I got, uh, maybe I can make it. Maybe, oh, maybe I could pay, paste a link. If I can bring it up in my right. Where's my brow? Um, but if you. But if you'd seen all the stories, I know what you mean. So if you've seen all the stories and then you went back to watch them all chronologically, then you would know about stuff that might not have been said in episodes that you've been watching before. Well, I've been watch- I've never watched the original series and stuff like that. So mm. um, in the end, um, in the end, like going back and watching the original series was quite helpful. I wonder if there's a chronological Doctor Who list. I'd like to I've have that. This- Oh, of, hey, a chronicle, a chronological oh, Doctor Who. Let, let me paste this. Um, I'll paste it into the Facebook. I'll paste it into the Facebook, and then that way, anyone on Facebook wants to have a look at it too. They can. The link is just in Facebook. I just posted it. Where, where you're at in Facebook? In uh, Facebook, where the video, the live video that we're watching. I've just pasted it. Oh, can you paste it into the message messenger for me? I pasted please? it into the Facebook. I can paste it in the messenger as well. The link. Right. Thanks. I'm sorry, I know I'm I'm needy. <laughs> I just <laughs> I can't I can't get it off that because I don't have that I up. Just have to just have to find what I did with it. I, oh, it's on the I've got that many screens. Are you a Trekkie, Joe? No, no, I'm not into the um, Star Trek. Star- I think I've only seen one or two episodes, and that's about it. Star Wars? No. I think we've been through this this Probably. discussion before. <laughs> I've just pasted it to you. And no, oh. I don't follow football either. Anyway, so as I was yeah, as I was saying, I watched it. So I've watched all of it, and then my boy knows I've been watching it. Yeah. So he, and he came in and said, "I've got some stories for you, Dad, because I know you haven't had time," which was pretty good of him. Now I've lost my my. There, oh, where are you? There you are. And um, so he came in. He said, "Oh, there's a story. Now I've lost a story. I can't even find it on my phone." But it was saying that the new Star Trek Discovery is talking about bringing back the universal unisex, or whatever you want to call it, unisex uh, dresses that they wore in Star Trek in the original series. Right, yeah. So it's like a man, and now I've lost the article, they called it a scant or something like that. Right. <laughs> so it's like, a, it's oh, like a dress outfit that men can wear and women can wear. So you see them on TNG, sorry, on the original series, you know, in their little short skirts. But it's actually a dress that some of the men wear as well. Yeah, okay, yeah, right though. And they're talking about bringing it back for Discovery. Yeah, right. I didn't mind, I don't mind the one suits or whatever they... You're call. looking at that list, there you go, you're looking at it right there. That's the one I've been following, and I'm up to where DS9 just started. What's the, what's the Ant? Ent is Enterprise. That's with the guy from Quantum Leap, whatever his name is. The the original. Is that is this no, the Ent is well, see, Enterprise was actually before like even though even that's that's probably where you can get it confused. The original series 
Um, oh, this is, okay. is the first series that aired, but Enterprise is the first story is is meant to be prequel to the original series. Oh, there's a mixture there. That's what I wanted to see. A mixture in there like that. Yeah, well, that's right. right. That's exactly right. Right. So I'm following. That's the actual list I'm following currently. And Here it's been we go. Really good. Like, because you get actors and stuff that, you know jump from episode to episode or whatever, and it's good that because sometimes you're watching a series and you see this actor come in, you're like, well, what, what is he doing there? He's on the other one. And then you go back and you realise you should have watched another episode before that one. You know, it's like with DC, you know, what are they, what's on TV at the moment? DC, um, the DC. Oh, I don't know. Wouldn't have you know, the new DC movies, like you got oh, uh, yeah, Supergirl yeah. and Supergirl and all them and, you got to watch them all together, Arrow and all, because they all kind of, all the actors kind of yes. jump in from, ep, you know, from episode to episode. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I wonder but if that they... Enterprise is pr- it, with the guy from Quantum Leap is, that's before. So it's kind of hard because you watch Enterprise and then you get to you get to the original series and you're like, man, the technology is so old. It was pretty hard to get through. Yeah. But then at, about halfway through it, I thought, you know what? This is freaking awesome. I didn't care how old the, nah, you know, the, movie right. sets, the movie sets and everything were. There was just so much classic Star Trek in TNG. It was unreal. Yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it in the end. I was a bit kind of – it took me a lot to get into because it was so old. But once I got into it, it was really good. Mm. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Excellent. So then I got on to teen, um, Enterprise uh, – sorry, not Next Generation, I should say – with John John Luke has been hard to get through. It's very eighties, you know, a lot of shoulder pads and <laughs> and frizzy hair. I'm getting there, getting through it. Yeah, oh, that's the go. I've just, I'm just, I'm trying. I'm just looking up to see if there's a Doctor Who list of that. But uh, here but you go. Love, Here's you know, how I love to watch Star Trek, and, and I love Stargate. I just wish that they'd bring out another Stargate. And everyone thinks I'm just a sci-fi buff, but it's 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 like it's it's something that they missed. Like when they did Stargate. Um, what was it called? Stargate. What was it called? Stargate. Yes. Was it gets Discovery or st- something? The latest one, and no one liked it. They only did two seasons. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't, know. I don't it follow was, it. it. Was it was like bloody the bold and the beautiful in space? It was just too much drama going on and not enough. Yeah. You know, right. Fun yeah. and adventure, which is what you got from Star Trek and yeah. Stargate. There was always a little bit of comedy in there and a little bit of stupidity and some yeah. seriousness and some adventure. I think there's a bit of one has just got too serious. I think there's a bit of uh, going off track on uh, Doctor Who at the moment, and hopefully we'll, they'll get back on track pretty soon. It, are they? Yeah, getting out of their normal. I've never watched Doctor Who. I kind of I find it really hard to get into. But yeah, no, it's gone more. It's gone down a bit of a politically correct route, a politically correct inclusive route. You yeah, know, it gets, and it gets too serious. Uh, that's sort of ahead of the story, and it just. Just yeah, just uh, look. The some of the stories were good. The the last the first series with the latest Doctor did get better uh, as towards the end of it, but it wasn't the same as the old the old stories. I think it was just something not right. But anyway, that's no, a story for another day. They just try to. It's what happened with Stargate. They just try, they they tried to do another season in Stargate. What was it called? It was called Discovery. I think it was called or something like that. Yeah. Now, all right, well, that's and, an- and they did the same thing. Too much drama, too much politically correct stuff, and it was just, it just kind of just, it just took away from the original feel of it. Mm. Now, uh, look, as I said, we'll just quickly go through this call-in situation, so you guys can know. So, if Jordan's here, you can call in. All right. So next- I don't know what that's got to do with me. I, I heard you say that on the live show last week, saying. Oh, we're not going to do calls in because Jordan's not here tonight. I'm like, yeah, because you're going to be the monitor. You're the call monitor, so so you'll be able to. But, but I just called in and you monitored and got me. Yeah, but, uh, but that's one person. I'm not going to monitor or a thousand well, how people. How am I going to know in. if they're in the room? If they're in the. Uh, well, because I'll yeah okay. So what's going to happen is so you guys the phone number will be o two eight o one five two o eight eight. O two eight o one five two o eight eight. So we'll publish the room number that you need to punch into your phone uh, at the start of the episode, and then once you get into the room number, uh, you've got to also put up in the Facebook live chat the last two digits of your phone number. 
so we know so that we know who it is. So we know who so, it is. So we know who it is. So when John puts up uh, five five as the last two digits in his phone number, when I, when we see the phone number come up in our list, we know that the five five belongs to John. So we go, we got the right person. If that makes sense. That's, that's, yes, otherwise, we're just going to be like, so who called us from this number? Yeah. Who are you? So it's all going to be touch and go and probably all fall in a heap. But anyway, nah, <laughs> we're going to give it a shot. Well, let's try it for so next for, week. So, so somehow in Zoom, I have to load up the, uh, what do you call it? The the room. I don't even know what that is. You're hosting the meeting, so I thought maybe you're the only one that can see it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll make you the host. I don't know. Well, I'll sort that out. But that <laughs> that's what we'll do. Well, even if, you can, if you're just watching the feed and you can tell me, who 5-5 five five belongs to, that might be all we need to do. Yep. All right. Sweet ass. All right. Well, that's we're going to get out of here because it's uh, it's getting well on past our end yeah, time. I've got to get back to me Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's good. <laughs> good stuff. All right. Well, and I've nearly got my jammy. That, you know, my jammy guitar I kept talking about, this new whiz-bang techno, technology, uh, technological guitar, so to speak, because a lot yes. of the, these electronic guitars that aren't real, Yes. They, they all run over Bluetooth and they use like a sound module in the phone or something. So you use the guitar to make sounds happen in your phone over Bluetooth and mm. so you play a chord and then you, it comes out of your phone or your device. But there's this like latency issue because the speed of the sound getting across the Bluetooth is just not anywhere near fast enough to be mm. you know, yeah. to be usable. So these new guitars, apparently all the sound modules and everything are on board in the guitar, but you still got to use your phone your Apple, or I think an Android as well. I think they said that you can use Android as well. Right. To change the sounds in the guitar so you can choose whether you want to use an electric guitar or a nylon string guitar or a, or a um, you know, a, a, just a steel string acoustic or you want to change it to drums and play drums with the guitar or yeah, right. piano with the guitar. And it's one of those startup companies, you know, where they go oh, online. Oh, that's and right, that's right. Yep, yep. Well, when's it coming out? Just, they've you well, they've use- just shipped out their first... I think thirty guitars or something, and I think I'm around order, order right. one thousand and something. Oh, okay. But as soon as I get it, as soon as I get it, I'll, I'll show you. It snaps in half, then yeah, it breaks right. in half, and you can put it in your bag so you can take it on an aeroplane. Or, yeah, right. Excellent. Yeah. Sounds well, pretty cool. Bit of bit, of bit of technology in you know in in guitars. It was a, a review that someone said that you know a lot of these other instruments have come into the digital era, you know, like dr- dr- drum kits. You can get drum machines now that aren't real drums and they just, you know, you play them through a MIDI or mm. whatever. And you can get all these different um, instruments that are digitally based now and they reckon that this is kind of a leap forward in the guitar kind of feel because most guitars can't do it. Yeah, These right. are the strings, the real strings. They're real. That's right. All right. right. Okay. A bit like a guitar, Jordan. Hey? A bit like a guitar. What's a keytar? You don't know what a keytar is? No. So it's like a keytar is like a, a piano. That uses keyboard keys? Yeah. That's right. Um, it's exactly it's right. It's a, it's, a, it's a guitar that uses keyboard keys. Yeah, well, this is nothing like that. This has actually got real strings. So it's like a real guitar. Like a real guitar. But it's got like little laser sensors. If you yeah. bring it up... Um, uh, there, Glenn. It's called a Jammy Guitar. The website is playjammy.com, J A W M Y dot com. And it used on the strings that it has like lasers or something, and it, they're like sensors. So it actually can pick, um, like, oh, there he is smashing. This is how we dissemble our old guitars in the old days, and this is how we do it now. <laughs> so, the video was. So he pulls it in half. Yeah, right. There we go. Oh, look at him there. Oh, so it hasn't got like a big... It hasn't got a big body on it. It just clips on and off. If you want to sit down, you can just you can clip the body on it and sit it on your knee. Or if you want to stand up, you don't need the body. You can just use a strap. You can see the guy. Right. It looks a bit like bloody Freddie Mercury on guitar. Yeah, right? it looks a bit poofy. He does, doesn't he? There's a video of him. Oh, my God. When you actually listen to the sound of the video, it's actually really funny. It's actually meant to be stupid. Oh, my God. That's crazy. But there it is there. Is that it? Just a a little stick? Yeah, pretty much. I'd rather have the guitar. Looks more fun to play. Well, that's a real guitar, though, and it's got sense. That's not a real guitar. You can do all all muting and and string bending and, and... um, you can play all, all the different 
you know, hammer-ons and things like that, which you couldn't do. I think the only thing that might, I'm not sure about, is harmonics because with harmonics you need the string to go all the way through. But everything else that seems like they're doing. But, you know, I've never had one in my hand, so I wouldn't. I can't tell you whether it's plastic or metal or, mm. or, um, or anything. I don't know. But it looks, it looks good. I mean, that video that they've got for their main video is pretty kind of, you got to really Cheesy. hear it. It's, it's kind of plays it plays it up. It's a bit funny. Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks interesting, comic. Jordan. You're gonna have to put, you have to gonna have to give us a demo on it when you get it. Yeah, well, I'm no soloist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do any of that flash finger dancing stuff. But um, I think the reason half the reason I bought it is because when I'm strumming away at home on the acoustic, I keep the family awake with my singing and playing. So with that one, I can put the headphones in the end of it mm. and just play away. Oh, well, because I just played that video pretty much in full, we'll probably get a takedown. So we, we get a takedown for the very last thing we did on the show this week. <laughs> so good on yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to, um, I'll have to do a review. Uh, what do you mean a takedown? Do like a video review? No, YouTube will say um, you've played one of our videos, take the whole show down. Oh, uh, that's what yeah, I, that's maybe doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't know. Jammy guitar probably wouldn't care. They're they're selling like crazy, trying to get people to buy them. So mm. yeah, well, that's what that's how I figure it. But we'll see what happens. All right, let's get out of here. Thanks. It is just cut it out. Just put yeah. put your face back on. I'm sure you've got the. I'm sure you've got the video of us talking about it while the video is playing in the background. No, well, I don't have no. Uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks, uh, Jordan. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you again after a couple of yeah. weeks break. Maybe next week I'll have some stories if I can run them time. I've finished installing the PA over there, so... That's good. Go back and see your Star time. Trek. Yeah, and, go back to the Star Trek. And, uh, Joe, thanks for coming in. Thanks for uh, your no worries, stories. Uh, thanks, all right, see you next week. And good lighting. I love it. And, uh, all right, we'll see you guys next week as well. So, until next week, I'm so glad the footy's back. Uh, I think by the time I finish the show here... Oh, it might have already started. Storm and, oh, the Storm and the uh, Broncos. Anyway. I hate football. Oh, I love it. So let's go Sharkies. In, the uh, Sharks are back. in Australia could just embrace music as much as they embrace football. Oh, the come music on. industry would be so much better. All right, just take this from me as a – take this to the bank. <laughs> Year of the Sharks. Come on, Sharkies. <laughs> All right, see you next week. <laughs> Bye, folks.